so what are some other things that you need before you start airbrushing? Now, we already went over the compressor. Okay, you need a compressor. The PSI that you set it to is very, very dependent on what you're doing. If you're doing base coating or doing primering, if primering is a word, uh, you're going to want to set up pretty high. By pretty high, I mean 40, maybe even 50. If you're doing small jobs, you want to set pretty low. Just remember that this thing kind of acts like the PSI is kind of like the obviously the velocity of which it comes out is really what it e equates to. But it's kind of like um, if, if, if you have like a handful of marbles or something like that and you're throwing it high PSI, if you throw it real hard, they're, they're going to kind of, almost like with a shotgun, right? High velocity shotguns have a pretty tight pattern depending on the choke, obviously, blah, blah, blah. But has a pretty tight pattern because as they leave the barrel, they don't have time to spread because gravity affects them at the same rate. Again, physics, right? Affects them at the same rate. And they get to their uh, place of impact before gravity has a chance to really throw them off course. The lower you set the PSI, the more gravity has an effect on it and the more it's going to bend and other weird things will happen. So you can go down to about 15 PSI. I've heard of people going down to 10 and craziness like that. 15 PSI is about as low as I can go without there being a real mess. Okay. Um, other little things that I would recommend that you get for an airbrush. Now, when you usually mix paint, you know, people say you mix it in here and all that kind of stuff. That could be kind of a pain in the butt, especially because right down there in that well, and I think it's kind of hard to see. It's very hard to see. Let's get the other one out. Okay, so right down here in the well, all right, it obviously takes, you know, so much paint. And there we go. That's a little bit better. So if you put the paint down in there, okay, and then you put your, what, the other paint, or you put whatever you're using as a mixing or, or mixing medium, you have to get down there and kind of stir it up. The problem is, is that you could see or not see. You bastard focus. There we go. Um, you want to make sure that you're not kind of a, a messing up the needle. That's the needle that's right there. But, you know, once you already put stuff down there, you can only mix up so much. The first little bit that comes out the airbrush is not going to be properly mixed. And because this is kind of an odd shape, you're going to have a hard time mixing it what's inside of the cup. Therefore, you can do one of two things. You can either buy little cups like this. And again, you get a Hobby Lobby. You get anything that's uh, lined on the inside. This is lined with some sort of silicone so that it's not uh, uh, water-soluble or permeable so that obviously your paints don't soak into the cup. This is awful bag on big actually be using for uh, airbrushing so yeah let's get something else now I got this probably from China uh, I wasn't in China you hear me wrestling around these little things right here these are little tiny cups um, they're for a tattoo artist and you know it's it's a very small amount here uh, they're good for lots of different things you know doing um, oil washes and all kinds of stuff they're really good for doing airbrushes one little piece of advice I would say if you are going to get these okay when you get them the way they press them have this little dually this little tip right here on the back it's it, it's from the injection process okay you need to get that off you can use an exacto knife you can use whatever because otherwise it doesn't really set right and you're going to be mixing it's going to fall over that really sucks the other thing is right when you use it just go ahead and <laughs> fumble around get a exacto knife or some sort of thing and just make a little slit not all the way through just a tiny little score kind of down the face right and the reason is because when you want the paint to leave you want all of it to get out you don't want very much paint left in here because you know paints expensive and you know you don't want to be wasteful about it and just doing a little score right there will help it that when you get done mixing it up and stuff when you pour it into the cup okay it's going to come out a little bit better so these are great i got guys i got 300 of these things i think it was for 99 cents free shipping from china all right and ebay is your friend all right, good. Uh, we already talked about this right here. This is the reducer. They come by different names, okay? But this is, again, meant for airbrushing. I actually got this in a hobby shop that doesn't know even how to spell miniatures. They just, you know, model cars and stuff like that. Those guys have this, the airbrushing stuff down to a science. Far better than we really do when it comes to doing a good technical job at airbrushing. They seem to know them. This stuff right here works really, really well. Uh, you go down to wherever, you get these little bottles. Now, I prefer these dropper bottles than the normal eyedropper type ones like this. 
The reason is because when you get something out of this, and I know this is an army painter, then when you get it out, a drop comes out, right? Because you have to hold it out. You can't really touch it to anything. This right here will actually, you can get half drops out of this thing if you really want. So you go like this, if you hold it up, and full drops come out. But if you only want a little bit, you can actually kind of go halfway and then touch it to something, and you don't have to get a full drop out. They're really nice. Anyway, um, you take your reducer and you mix it half and half with water, and then you label it like me, so you don't, you know, accidentally drink it or something like that. And you're on your way to uh, uh, to having a nice little thinning agent right there for you. This is good for airbrushing. You can save it for airbrushing only. There's a different type of mixer you can use for when you're painting. Again, check out my channel and see the, how to thin your paints. Okay, so that's the other thing that you need. Uh, uh, Speaking of making sure I don't drink it, I, you know. yeah, drink something though. Okay, so there you go. There are the kind of uh, basics for the other things that you need. Uh, you see, I have a piece of uh, paper down here. Okay, if you use acrylic paints, okay, and only if you use acrylic paints, I have found in my experience, and I'm not susceptible to anybody going and trying to sue me because the hack said you can do yada yada yada. Okay. I haven't had an issue airbrushing with acrylic paints using nothing more than just like a desk span as ventilation. If you use anything else, enamels or anything else, you got to get one of those fancy, smancy, big, huge uh, uh, airbrushing stations that you know wick the 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 air away so you don't breathe in all those toxic fumes and you know kill yourself. Um, Again, for acrylics, I have found okay. I believe the active ingredient in this thing right here, by the way, is probably ammonia because it smells a lot like ammonia. Uh, it contains, I'm sorry, it's it's ethanol. Um, it's 2-buxyl ethanol. That's the active ingredient because it says right there. just read it. Anyway, that's probably not something you really want to breathe in. But as you're spraying and as you're painting, okay, if I'm painting like this, if I had, you could kind of see the edge of my... A piece of paper. You want some paper down too, by the way. White is nice. Use whatever you want because never start spray painting onto or airbrushing on a model. We'll go over that stuff later. You have something that you can you can uh, airbrush onto and something cheap, regular, so you can regularly change it. Okay, this is a piece of junk paper, so as soon as I'm done doing whatever, I can switch it out. Anyway, the point is, if you saw, if you see the the edge of my little thing here where I have a bunch of garbage and junk and mess. That right there, if I had a little desk fan right there that was kind of, you know, at floor level or at the desk level, you know, blowing out to somewhere where there's ventilation, open window, or even if it's, you know, winter and, you know, it just kind of goes around the room. And so far, and I haven't, you know, keeled over yet, um, airbrushing with acrylics is okay, but you definitely want to have ventilation. Remember, there are more things that you airbrush with than just acrylics. You have... Uh, some wonderful things like this Minotaur Ghost Tint. Okay, um, this, is, this is airbrush ready. They make a lot of things like airbrush ready. You can go into that. And I'll go into all that later on. Okay, they have that. You don't really want to breathe that in, although it is still uh, water soluble. You have varnishes. Varnishes and airbrushing sometimes is good, sometimes. But again, you don't want to breathe that stuff in. They have primers. Uh, Army Painter makes some fantastic primers that you can use. Um, Again, you don't want to breathe that stuff in, right? Uh, washes. You can even use washes through your airbrush. That's right. Don't tint something. Uh, a wash will work like a glaze when you put it through your airbrush. Uh, kind of like just like the, the, the Minotaur stuff, the ghost tint right there. But again, I mean, you don't want to breathe this stuff in, guys. So make sure you have some ventilation. At least have a plan for ventilation. And uh, I think that's really kind of about it for all the side stuff that you need. Um... Now let's talk a little bit about the airbrush itself, okay? I said before you need the thinner. Heed my warnings, please. The most frustrating thing about airbrushing is not learning to do it, is not learning to air. It's actually a lot of fun. It's this damn thing clogging. I have been told that different levels of craftsmanship of um, airbrushes may or may not clog less, but Everybody basically says they clog. Clogging, it, it just ruins your day because you're sitting here and you have something in mind. So you're going and you're airbrushing and then 
it stops coming out and you pull back a little bit on the thing and nothing comes out. So you pull back a little bit more and all of a sudden this huge friggin' snot wad comes out of paint, goes all over the place, makes a huge mess. And then you kind of get it and you're pulling back on it until you get the, uh, the level that you uh, want again, the, the finite detail line that you want with an airbrush and it's starting to flow again. You'll back on your model and nothing happens. And you're like, what the hell? And you go like this and the big snot ball comes out again. And then you go back on to the miniature and eventually what's going to happen is you're going to be doing this number you'll be you know starting it off because always start move over this always start off the miniature and you'll get your line going you come in you'll and nothing will be happening so you go off on off on you know and you're kind of doing this little working the paint out stuff like that and you come on again and then all of a sudden you pull it and a big stop ball go all over your miniature and you well that's enough of that business Avoid some of that frustration by really paying attention and thinning your paints properly ahead of time. Okay, and we're gonna go over thinning. That's the first thing I'm gonna teach you guys is how to thin your paints. And then we're gonna to get to actually painting the model and the different um, techniques to painting a model and kind of different things you can do, okay? So please guys, learn to thin your paints. Again, you can use this and I'm gonna use this too. I'm gonna to use this for all the naysayers out there to use this thick goopy crap right here um i'll even use some of this stuff which is just it's thicker goopier crap it's good color though good color okay. um i'm going to use this stuff and i'm going to thin it down for you guys so you could see exactly what you need to do because thinning your paint in air you think it's good for normal painting or important for normal paint for airbrushing it's absolutely critical to get done right trust me even when it's super thin this sucker right here is going to put a beautiful coat of paint on your miniature every time you don't even need to worry about it um, it's a really great thing okay so now we're going to talk about in the next video the approach to um, airbrushing and the approach is very important so please stay tuned